In school, most of us tend to stress ourselves out because of procrastinating on our work and cramming for our exams. But what if I told you that by studying more often, you could study less, even if you're a crammer? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Luis. I'm a third year medical student from the Philippines. And in this video, I'll be talking about spaced repetition. If you haven't watched my previous video on active recall, I recommend you go and watch it first because this technique is very complementary to it. I divide this video into three parts. The first part being how memory works. The second part being what space repetition is and how it improves your memory. And the third part, some of the techniques that I use to incorporate space repetition into my study sessions. So feel free to skip around to the parts that most interest you. So through decades of research, psychologists have determined that memory is governed by three distinct processes, encoding, storage, and retrieval. Encoding is the process by which we convert stimuli from our environment into electrical impulses. It can be likened to exchanging currency where you go to a foreign country and change your home currency for the currency of that nation. Storage is the process by which our brain attempts to store this information, whether in short-term or long-term memory. Retrieval is then the process by which our brain attempts to bring back that information out of storage. And this is where you see the difference between short-term and long-term memory, with short-term memory only being stored for a very relatively short amount of time, as opposed to long-term memory, which can last days, weeks, and even up to a lifetime. So when we are unable to recall information, we have essentially forgotten them. And this is the topic of interest by the scientist Hermann Ebbinghaus back in the late 19th century, where he studied the rate at which humans forget information by testing it on himself. He found that humans tend to forget things at an exponential rate, and this has been found true by replications of this study over time. So for example, if it takes you a day to forget half the content in a lecture you listen to, by the second day, you would have already forgotten 25% of the lecture. Despite this exponential forgetting rate, Ebbinghaus also found that by attempting to recall the information through process such as active recall, you could actually decrease the rate at which you forget the information. He also found that by spacing out his active recall sessions, his memory of the information would go stronger as he spaced out the gaps. And this is essentially what space repetition is. Testing plus time. The reason you need to increase the intervals is because you need to give your time for your brain to forget the information. As I said earlier, every time you actively recall the information, the rate at which you forget it will decrease. So you need to increase the time interval so that you give your brain enough time to forget to make it challenging for you to recall it. You can liken it to lifting weight, where after a certain time, lifting a certain weight becomes no longer challenging. So you need to, you need to increase the weight so that you can stimulate muscle growth. And the same concept applies to space repetition, that by increasing the intervals, you strengthen the neural connections in your brain. You're probably then wondering, what's the ideal time interval to space out your study session? And the answer to that is, it depends. When exams can be announced the month before, or as short as the week before, it's important to optimize the time interval for the targeted date of retention. According to a study done by Kang and colleagues back in 2013, they recommended that if you want to maximize performance on the test a week away, then the ideal lag time would be about one day. But if you want to retain information for one year, then a lag time of about two months would be ideal. With this in mind, you have to optimize your study intervals based on the preparation time that you have. And this is best exemplified in Philippine medical schools where schools use one of two systems in scheduling exams. There's a traditional system where each core subject has their own unique exam such as anatomy, physiology, pathology, etc. And this method is the most commonly used here in the Philippines, such as UST, UERM, and St. Luke's College of Medicine. Schools that use the traditional method typically have their exams for one week that they hold every month. On the other hand, there are schools that use the Mojo-based system, such as ASMPH and the UP College of Medicine, which incorporates the different core subjects into one lecture series, and as a result, combines them all into one single exam instead of having separate exams. Under the Mojo-based system, these schools hold their exams on a weekly basis with a comprehensive exam at the end of every semester. This is similar to the comprehensive finals that schools that use the traditional method also utilize. Each system has their pros and cons with the traditional method allowing you more time to study but having the con of having to study more for a single exam. In contrast, the Mojo-based method allows you to study less but also, at the same time, have less preparation time due to there being only one week in between exams. 
Given that I'm from a school that uses the module-based system, I have to use short intervals in between my repetitions to allow me to see the material enough times for me to remember it. From my experience, around 3 to 4 spaced repetitions within the week have yielded me the optimal results. This includes hearing the lecture for the first time and doing 2 to 3 active recall sessions with my flashcards within the week before my exam. So let's say you're a crammer and you're not really interested in learning information for the long term. Space repetition can still be a very useful tool for you. So instead of cramming a list of facts 8 hours the day before an exam, you can set that session up into 3 to 4 smaller sessions throughout the week and that way you retain the information better and for longer. This is evidenced by a study done in 2011 where researchers tested a group of students who had to memorize a bunch of words in Swahili. They found that those who did mass practice, meaning those who did all their practice in one long session, didn't fare much better compared to those who just recalled the information once, and nowhere near the results of those who applied space repetition. So now I'll go over some of the techniques that I use and some techniques I found online while doing research for this video. As I mentioned in the previous video, I use the app Anki as my flashcard app of choice when actively recalling the information that I've studied. Then the beauty of Anki is that it has a space repetition algorithm built in derived from Ebbinghaus's experiments and you can tweak this to suit your needs based on your intended retention date. And I'll leave a link in the description of a video that goes in depth on how the Anki algorithm works because it's a very in-depth topic that I can't really get into in this one. If flashcards aren't your thing, the YouTuber Ali Abdal utilizes a spreadsheet method where he divides the topic into all its major subtopics and lists down questions that he thinks will come out the exam under each subtopic. He lists all the questions in one column and the answers in the adjacent column where he turns them white so that he can hide the answers so that he's forced to recall the, an the answers to the questions of memory. He also has a highlight system in this technique where he highlights a question as green, yellow, or red to indicate how comfortable he is with the question so you have an idea of how long to give yourself before you try to answer the questions again. So for example, if it's highlighted green, you probably give yourself a few more days before you answer it again compared to something that you highlighted red, which you'd probably answer the day after you attempted to answer it. Another beauty of this question spreadsheet method is that it allows you to utilize Google Sheets so that you can have easy cloud access for free to all your questions wherever you are just by using your smartphone. I apply a similar technique using the toggle feature in Notion, where I use the toggle feature to hide my notes and highlight the parts based on how confident I feel about the topic. The benefit of this method is that I can start from general to specific with the general questions being at the start and as I reveal each answer, I reveal also the more specific questions to pertain to the more nitty gritty information. Another technique that I learned from the YouTuber Ali Abdal is the retrospective revision timetable where as opposed to the more prominent revision timetable where you plan out the days that you'll study a specific topic, this method makes you evaluate how comfortable you are with a topic after you've revised it by marking green, yellow, or red along with the date that you revised it. So for example, if you reviewed topic A on one day and you felt very confident with your knowledge of the topic, you'd mark it green and then review it after probably three days or so. Then you move on to reviewing topic B and then you feel that you're not so comfortable with your understanding of the topic. So you mark it red, which will prompt you to review it after a day or so. The beauty of this revision technique is that it allows you to review based on how confident you feel about the topic rather than allocating a specific time. Because sometimes we retain certain information more than others. And this allows you to focus more on the topics that you're weak at and less on the ones you're already strong at. A similar technique that I found while doing research for this video is the idea of knowledge bursts from the YouTuber Liam Porritt. This is the idea that you do bursts of topics for your exam every day in such a way that you end up going over everything within 2-3 to three times that week. Referring to Liam's video, let's say you have 8 topics to study for an upcoming exam. On the first day, you study topics 1, 2, and 3, then repeat topic number 1 at the end of the first day. On day 2, you study topics 4 and 5, then you restudy topics 2 and 3 from the previous day. On day 3, you do 1 again because let's say you found it difficult, then study topic 6 and 7, and then review topic 4. On day 4, you do topic 8, 7, 3, and 4, and on day 5, you do topic 1, 5, 8, and 6. 
This leaves you two days to go over the topics you're still quite unsure of and to make sure you fill in the gaps where you feel that you're weakest. If your exam isn't in a week's time but rather say a month away, you can repeat this process while incorporating the new lessons leading up to your exam week. So to recap what I went over in this video, I discuss how memory works and how spaced repetition improves our ability to retrieve information. I went over what spaced repetition is and the principles behind it. I discussed some of the techniques that I use in my own study, as well as other techniques used by YouTubers Ali Abdal and Liam Porat. And if you made it this far in the video, I'd like you to know that these concepts aren't limited to academic learning, but also applicable to all forms of learning as well, such as if you're learning a language, learning a sport, or learning an instrument. When applying the concept of spaced repetition to these activities, you'll find that doing short practices very often will be better than doing a mass practice once a week or once a month. If you like this content, please make sure to leave a like and comment down below and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any future content. My name is Luis and I'll see you guys in the next video.